Hi everyone and welcome back to the second lecture for the first week of juvenile justice. So in the first lecture we pro provided sort of like an inner overview for the whole for juvenile justice. We talked about a lot of terminology. Make sure you understand all the classifications of children. Now this lecture we're going to do a quick overview of the whole process. So you can see the sort of the process in your mind as we work through it week by week. So this is just kind of providing you with an overview of the whole system. Obviously, as we work through it each week, we're gonna get into a lot more detail, okay? So we're just gonna start talking about the process. Okay, so to get us thinking about the process, I want you to think about what are the three main parts of the adult ju criminal justice system? So hope you may have taken intro or another course. If you had to identify the three main parts of the criminal justice system, what would be those three parts? Hopefully you said police, courts, and corrections, okay? So one of the things we're gonna do in here is constantly looking at adult system versus juvenile system. So the adult system, police, courts, and corrections. So then my question is, what are the three components of the juvenile justice system? Hopefully you said the same thing, police courts and corrections, okay? We call the court juvenile court and in New York it's called family court, but it's still police courts and corrections. So one thing that's similar between the two, they all have police courts and corrections as the three components. We, one of the differences is we call the court system something a little different, okay? So what I want us to do is just start thinking about what are the steps. Now, you're not gonna know this, you're not gonna know all of these, but it's really good to just try and sort of think through it. We went through some terminology in the last class and talked about what each term means. So hopefully you can use that to help you fill the chart out, okay? So you're gonna take these seven words. So aftercare, adjudication, juvenile court intake, probation, disposition, petition, and detention. So write those seven words down. Once you have those seven words down, flip to the next slot or keep watching the video and you're going to put those words into where they belong. So hopefully you wrote all seven words down, okay? Now here's the chart. What I want you to do is see if you can fit in the words in order where they would fit. So just do the best you can. I'm going to post this diagram online so you can print it if you want and you can have it in your notes. It's a good way to have this diagram so you understand the order of the steps, which we're going to talk about all semester. So it could be a really good re uh, resource for you if you're taking this online. So stop the video, put them in, and when you're all set, start the video again. So... Hopefully you have them all in and here's the answer. If you didn't get them right, just cross them out and put them in where they belong, okay? So when we're talking about the steps in the process, you um, start with law enforcement and then you have some sort of referral into the criminal justice system. Then you have juvenile court intake and a petition then adjudication then disposition, which can lead to probation or detention and then aftercare. Okay, we're gonna talk quickly through each of those. We're gonna get into much more detail later, but at least you'll have this understanding what each of those are after this lecture. So we're gonna start on, uh, we're gonna focus on the juvenile justice system. Now, when we're talking about the juvenile justice system, we have to talk about what is its focus. So everything we're gonna talk about this semester is gonna always refer back to this focus. The sole focus of the juvenile justice system is what is the best interest of the child. So when we work through all of these steps and we're discussing all of these steps, every player in the juvenile justice system, as they work through the steps, always have to refer back in their mind, what is the best interest of the child? That is always the standard that should be applied when any decisions, any discretionary decisions are being made. Now, my question is, how does this differ from the adult criminal justice system? What is the focus for the adult criminal justice system? Well, it is justice, okay? And justice may not be best interest, right, of the child. Justice has to balance 
what's best for society. Like how, what is the best to treat society? Is it best to punish, rehabilitate, restore? We want to balance justice, right? And justice kind of differs sometimes depending on the person you're talking about. But when you're in the juvenile justice system, we're not necessarily focused on justice for society. What we're focused on is what is the best interest of the child? What is going to be the best way to rehabilitate and fix this child? So we may consider rehabilitation in the adult system, but we're definitely gonna consider it in the, uh, the juvenile justice system. What's the best interest? And the best interest is always to fall back on rehabilitation and helping the child whenever we possibly can. So it's a really big difference. Now, how does a ju juvenile become involved in the process in the first place? So we said in the adult system, you get involved if there's a crime committed. How do we get involved in the juvenile system? We have to have what's called a judicial referral. A judicial referral is some source that is going to recommend that the juvenile become involved in the juvenile system. That's what I mean by a referral. So when we think about referrals, who the heck would make these referrals? It could be lots of different things. Number one, it could be police. I don't know what the nine is, get rid of the nine, but um, it could be police. Police would be the main source of referrals. Um, other sources, it could be schools, uh, um, people from the schools, it could be parents, it could be probation officers. So there are different people that can make referrals into the juvenile justice system. When you're talking about the adult system, people go into the adult system when somebody reports a crime, a victim or a witness calls and reports a crime or a police officer discovers a crime. That's how the juvenile justice system occurs. With the, I'm sorry, with the adult juvenile, the adult criminal justice system begins. In the juvenile justice system, somebody actually will refer that juvenile into the system. Now, when we think about referral, we have to think about what factors would impact a police officer or another person in referring a juvenile to the juvenile court system. Remember, we're always thinking about what's the best interest of the child. So we need to think about that when we're thinking about when would you make a referral into the system. And so some of the factors that may be considered is the seriousness of the crime, uh, the need to teach the juvenile a lesson. Those kind of things should be the factors um, that a uh, referral source uses in deciding whether or not to refer the juvenile to the juvenile court system. Now, just get thinking about this, what would be some offenses that each of these could make a referral for? And each of them may be referring for different things. So remember we talked about status offenses. A status offense could be truancy, not going to school. So maybe a school makes a referral to the juvenile justice system because of truancy, okay? Or could be violence or something or drug use or something in the schools. Parents, maybe this is undisciplined. Maybe it's a referral to the juvenile justice system because they can't control their child and they're out past curfew and they're not following the rules. Victims could make referrals for actually for crimes where they're a victim and police also could be for anything could be for any of these, okay? So the source may refer for different things. Anybody can refer for any of those things, but some certain sources are probably gonna refer for different offenses. Now, when there's a referral, it can lead to what we call custody. Now, custody is equivalent to arrest in the adult system. Okay, now it's important to understand just because a referral is made uh, to the police or into the juvenile justice system, it doesn't mean that that child is absolutely going to be taken into custody. Remember, best interest of the child. I'm going to keep saying that over and over and over. The intake officers could review it and decide it's really not in the best interest to pursue this against this juvenile for many, many reasons. So they use their discretion. So just because they're a referral doesn't automatically mean custody or arrest. 
Now, if there is custody, what if there is custody? Then we move into the actual juvenile court system. When you're talking about the juvenile court system, you're talking about four main steps, okay? So this is you get referred, you go for, um, and then if we decide to take you into custody, then you're taken to juvenile court system. These would be the four steps that you would move through, okay? So intake, petition, adjudication, disposition. Now, we compared those to the adult system in the last lecture. So hopefully you have some understanding of what equivalent they are in the adult system. So see if you can in your head, remember what their equivalency is. We will re re remind you as we move through the rest of the lecture. Okay, so we're gonna start with the first intake procedure. Okay, so when we're looking at our diagram, this is our first box here. Now, when we're talking about judicial court intake, we're talking about the staff within the juvenile court system, which is family court in New York, re reviewing the situation and making a determination of whether or not they should continue on into this process. So I'm gonna stop real quick. Intake is your key word for this lecture. So make sure you write that down and you send me an email with that word so I know that you listen to this lecture. Okay. So during this intake process, the court staff will interview and talk with the juvenile and they'll have to make a decision, best interest of the child, should you continue on with this process. Another thing that they may review is whether that you should be detained prior to adjudication. Now, best interest of the child means we don't detain very many children prior to their, you know, determination of if they committed the um, a, a delinquent act or not but in some cases it's necessary. Very, very rare and even more rare with new juvenile justice reforms, but that is a decision that could be made. Now, what is the equivalent in the adult system? Booking and probably like the initial appearance, okay? So those would be the closest equivalent of the adult system. Number booking is making the administrative record, fingerprinting, mug shots, writing the arrest report. An initial appearance is the first time that a judge goes to court, I'm sorry, that a defendant goes to court and the judge will read the charges and determine whether or not the person will get out prior to their trial. <clears throat> so those are equivalent to the judicial intake. Now, if they decide to move forward in the intake process, the next step is what we call the petition. The petition is when the prosecutor makes the determination of whether or not a person should um, uh, continue in the process. So this is a little out of order. So I'm gonna go back. This is actually intake. You are an intake officer with the juvenile court department. One evening, police bring you a juvenile, uh, Jeremy, who is accused of assault arising out of confrontation between him and his ex-girlfriend's current boyfriend. According to police, the boyfriend confronts Jeremy at a local mall and starts to threaten him if he does not stop harassing his ex-girlfriend. Jeremy shoves the boyfriend who trips and falls down a flight of stairs. The fall leads to minor injuries. Jeremy has never been taken into custody before and is a good kid at school. He appears to be remorseful, is polite and courteous during the intake process. All indications are that Jeremy is a good kid caught up in a bad situation. Okay, you're the intake officer in the court. What do you do? Do you dismiss the case? Do you handle the matter informally? Do you refer the case for adjudication to continue on to a trial? What would you do if you were the intake officer in family court with this child? Remember, discretion. You have to make a determination. Also remember, the standard you're using is best interest of the child, what would be in the best interest of this child. When you're making these determinations, what factors would influence your decision, okay? And then if you do decide to adjudicate, do you put him in a detention center or release him to his parents before you move on to the actual juvenile trial or adjudication? So those are all things you have to think about. So think about it in this real context, what would you do? Okay, so now I'm going back. 
So now if you decide you would continue on with adjudication, then the next step is what we call a petition, okay? So a petition is when the prosecutor has to decide what the formal charges would be against this juvenile, okay? So in the adult system, it would be equivalent to adult indictment. So that's when the court has already decided to continue on. Now the prosecutor has to decide on the charges and file an actual petition. Now, it's really an accusatory instrument in the adult system. If it's a felony, it's an indictment. If it's a misdemeanor, it's a um, misdemeanor complaint. But in general, we'll just say indictment, but it's really an accusatory instrument, okay? Now, does a prosecutor have to file a petition with the police place the juvenile in custody and the intake officer says so? Who gets to make that ultimate determination? No, the prosecutor has discretion, just like in the adult system. The prosecutor has discretion on what to do. If the prosecutor decides it's not in the best interest of the juvenile, then the prosecutor can choose alternative actions, um, defer them to different programming or other possibilities. So they do not have to refer them on or um, file a petition to continue on with the process. Now, you are the prosecutor. Uh, it is the day before the town's big 4th of July barbecue. Everyone's cooking outside. The Bugs Brothers, Oliver 18, Mickey 15, Yogi 6, go to the store. Oliver explains to Yogi that they're going to play a game of hide and seek with food. Oliver takes steaks from the meat counter and slips them under his jacket. Yogi wants to play, so he hires the hamburger buns under his shirt and Mickey stares at his two brothers and then looks to the meat counter. After waiting a while and then glaring at Oliver, Mickey reluctantly stuffs some chicken inside his jacket. Oliver tries to... Um, uh, lead his brothers out of the store, but they are stopped by security and arrested for shoplifting. So your job is to decide what legal system your brothers should be tried. Um, so if you're in class, I was going to assign one brother to each group, but since you're online, you need to think through each one. So what would you do for Oliver? What would you do for Mickey? What would you do for Yogi? So what are some of the things you should think about would you send them to adult court? Would they be in juvenile court? Or would you completely dismiss it in the interest of the child? Okay, and think about what are the differences between them? What are the factors you're considering? What affects you making these choices? Okay, now, and there's no real right or wrong answer, it's just to get you thinking. If the prosecutor decides to file a petition, then we move on to the next step, which is called adjudication. So adjudication is the juvenile trial. So the equivalent in the adult system is the trial. We don't call it a trial because we don't want to stigma, stigmatize juveniles. We just call it a adjudication. So remember, delinquent act is a crime. And then if it's a trial in the adult system, a judification in the juvenile justice system. At this phase, this is when the judge determines if the juvenile is delinquent or not. So we don't determine if they're guilty or not, we determine if they're delinquent. In the adult phase, we determine whether or not they're guilty. Now, there is a decision sometimes that's made during this step. The prosecutors have to determine whether or not to treat, uh, to send the juvenile to the adult system. So we know age, we know 18 and over is adult, under 18 is juvenile justice, family court. But there are circumstances where the prosecutor can transfer a juvenile under 18 to the adult court. Generally, the default is always family court, juvenile court. But in certain circumstances, a prosecutor may seek to move to adult court. So like what factors do you think would affect that decision? Usually it could be number of victims and seriousness of the crime. 
in our New York penal law, there's actually specific crimes that automatically can get referred to the adult court because we consider them particularly bad crimes, no matter what age, well, uh, down to like 13. So we do have to consider this. We'll talk a lot more about waiver later in the semester. Now, just some quick distinctions between the juvenile and criminal court system. The juvenile system is considered more of a civil proceeding. Again, best interest of the child, not punishing for the sake of punishment, more civil in trying to reform and rehabilitate the juvenile. It's much, much more informal. The rules of evidence are not anything that they are like in the adult system. There's no jury in the juvenile system. It's the judge. They're usually not too adversarial and confrontational because the best interest of the child, um, they don't always have transcripts like they would in the adult system. Uh, originally, it was just preponderance of evidence, but that has been changed to beyond a reasonable doubt. And generally the punishments are, penalties are limited or lower than in the criminal system. Obviously, in the adult system, you do have criminal proceedings that are much, much more informal because you're taking somebody's liberties away. You are entitled to a jury. It is adversarial. You have defense attorneys and prosecutors battling it out in the dual court, in the dual system, the adversarial system. Records are kept. They're public records. Sometimes in the juvenile system, they're sealed. They're quiet. Nobody can go in there. But in the public, in the adult system, they're open to the public. The standard is beyond a reasonable doubt. And there's many, many punishments, including life without parole and death, which are not necessarily options in the juvenile system. So it's a quick overview. We'll obviously talk a lot about these later throughout the semester. Now, if you go through adjudication and the judge determines that the juvenile is delinquent, then we move to the disposition stage. So just disposition is basically sentencing. So that's the equivalent in the adult system. It's sentencing. So once the juvenile is determined to be uh, um, delinquent, we have to figure out what the punishment would be. What's the best interest of the child? What's the best punishment would that serve the best purpose for that child? Now, there can be different forms of juvenile dispositions. There's nominal, which are considered less serious. You could have conditional, which could be more like probational. You could have custodial dispositions where you're actually locking them up. Um, there's different sort of facilities. They can be a non-secured or secured. Again, we'll get into many, many more details in each of these as we move through the semester. So you can finish up your chart. We have detention, and then that's the probation. But then the last thing we may have is aftercare, okay? So probation is equivalent to juvenile probation, similar concepts. Um, detention is prison in the adult system. And then juvenile aftercare is parole in the adult system, okay? So just to have you thinking about this position, if you were the judge, what disposition would you give each juvenile? So read through each and think about it. What punishment do you think should happen in the disposition? Always referring back in your mind when you're making this determination, what's in the best interest of the juvenile? What would be the best options for the juvenile in each of these cases? And again, there's no real right or wrong answer. Okay, so that's it. So the last thing is I will post this chart this chart will be posted online and you may want to print it out and fill in some of the gaps. So based on what we just learned, what are some of the similarities and differences between the adult and juvenile system in each of these steps? So the steps on the left are the juvenile, on the right are the adult. So you have referral or crime reported, judicial intake, which is kind of booking initial appearance. We have petition or accusatory instrument. We have adjudication or trial. We have disposition and sentencing and detention or incarceration. So talk about some of the similarities and differences between the adult and juvenile systems in each of these stages. This is really a good thing to start thinking about because ultimately you can use this at the very end of the semester 
when writing your final paper for the class. So it might be something you want to just print out, work on a little bit, and really keep uh, your hands on throughout the semester. And you can even fill it out. Okay, so the last thing is your homework. You have first week introduction to um, juvenile justice system assignment. It shouldn't take you too long. Okay, so that is the end of the last lecture for this week. So make sure that you go through the letter that I posted, all of the things listed in the letter and make sure you do everything. Make sure you did your discussion, make sure you did your um, assignment. And then next week, we'll actually move on to the book material. So make sure you have got the books in your hand. And we'll start talking about the actual history of juvenile justice next week. So hope you're enjoying the class so far. And I will see you next week.